Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa al-aqibatu al-muttaqeen, wa la adwana illa ala al-zalimeen, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah ilaha al-awwaleen wa al-akhireen, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolu alayhi afdul as-salatu wa tamma taslim. My respected brothers and sisters of Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once saw a procession of people passing by as a grave, as, a, as the body of one of the people were being taken towards a grave. And at that point, Rasulullah in this authentic hadith in Bukhari, he said, Imma mustarihin aw mustarahan minhu. He said, What? Let me repeat that again. Imma mustarihin aw mustarahan minhu. What does that mean? Mustarihin meaning that it is perhaps someone who will rest, or mustarahan minhu, or someone who people will rest from him. So it is either someone who is now going from this life that was a prison for him, and he was a believer, and now he will go to his rest true rest, so he's going to rest, so he's the mustarihin, or mustarahan minhu, or it is someone who has caused so much evil and mischief on this earth, and so much sins and transgression that people will now, and creation and the heavens and the earth will now rest from his mischief. And he's going back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for him. And truly, once, at another time as well, another procession was going past Rasulullah again in Bukhari again. And so people started saying bad things about that person. And at that point, when they were saying bad things, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Wajabat, it has become compulsory. And another procession passed by, and the, and, and the people started saying good things about the man, and at that point Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wajabat, again, meaning it has become compulsory. So the people said, Ya Rasulullah, the first procession passed, he said, Wajabat, Second procession, he also said, Wajabat, what do you mean by it has become compulsory? So Rasulullah Sallallahu explained and he said, the first procession passed by and he said bad things about the person. So Jahannam has become obligatory on him. He must enter and will enter, surely enter Jahannam. And the second procession passed by and you said good things about, about him. So it has become obligatory meaning, Jannah has become obligatory for him. So how will you pass by? How will you pass away? And what will people say after you? Will they say good things about you, how much good you did, or will they say about how much bad you did? Rectify your affairs with people, because truly, if they speak bad about you, Jahannam will be obligatory for you. And if they say good things about you truly, Jannah will become obligatory for you. So rectify your affairs before your grave. My friends, the first night in the grave is truly the most important night that we will ever have to have. Why? Because truly, this is our hereafter. Because you might be thinking, okay, hereafter we're waiting for the blowing of the horn. Once a group of people came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is an authentic hadith in Muslim, and said, Ya Rasulullah, mata sa'a? Ya Rasulullah, when is the hour? At that point, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, the youngest amongst you will not grow old, except that your hereafter will have started already. The youngest amongst you will not grow old, except that your hereafter, meaning you would have passed away by then, so your hereafter, as far as you're concerned, don't have to wait for the last hour. Your hereafter will have started already. Because here, your hereafter is, is with your death. Do not await the blowing of the horn, it's with your death. As soon as you die, your hereafter will have started already. And once pro- the, the Prophet ﷺ, as in an authentic hadith again in Bukhari, and this is all reported in the Kitab al-Jana'is of al-Bukhari, the chapter of, of, uh, of, of funeral, funeral uh, processions and prayers, in that chapter, Rasulullah he came out of his hut. And he was crying so much that his eyes had become red. And he came to the people and he said, Laula Allah tadafanu. Where it be that you would never bury a dead. La da'utullahu li yusmi'akum min adhab al qabr alladhi asma. I would have asked Allah to let you hear of the punishment of the grave from what I hear. On that day, as Fatul Bari ibn Hajj al mentions, Ibn Hajar Rahimullah mentions in, the, in, the, in this uh, verse, he's saying that on that day, people will be punished so much so, that Rasulullah SAW could only could hear their scream so much, that he could not sleep all that night. And he was crying all that night, and as a result, he came out and this is what he said. Ya Salam, it is for this reason why, a lot of well, the animals for example, are the, are the ones who can hear the screams of the people who are being punished. And yet we humans do not hear that scream. Another authentic hadith in Musnad Imam Ahmed, Rasulullah Sallallahu he was passing by a grave and he was on his horse. And as he was passing by the grave, the horse started to jump up and down and started to throw Rasulullah off its back. 
And at that point Rasulullah understood and knew that grave was one of the people that he knew. And he started to cry and at that point he told his companion said, Ya ikhwani, O oh my friends, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَعِدُّ For the example of this, prepare yourself. For the example of this, prepare yourself. Do not be in a delusion, people will be punished in the graves. Do not be in a delusion, people can be punished and they will be punished. And we find numerous authentic ahadith of Rasulullah pointing to that. In fact, in the Qur'an itself is an indication that people will be punished in the grave. As we find in Surah Ghafir, in verse number 45 to 46, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that Qur'an, وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ and indeed, the terrible punishment has already started for the people of Pharaoh, meaning the army of Pharaoh, the family of Pharaoh that disbelieved along with, with Pharaoh, with, with Pharaoh. <laughs> Verily, the fire is being lit upon them in the morning and at night. And on the day of judgment, Allah will order the angels enter the people of Pharaoh into the terrible torment. What is being talked about here? What is the fire that was been referred to before the adab of the Jahannam on the Day of Judgment? Obviously it must be the adab of the Barzakh, punishment of the, of the grave. But they never died in the grave. Where did they, grow, where did they die? They were, they were crushed by the water, wasn't it? They were drowned in the sea. So it does not matter wherever you are. Whether you are in the grave, or you have been eaten by an animal, or you're, you have been burnt and you are in ashes, or you have been lost and no one knows where you are, you cannot escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even though they were drowned by the water, Allah mentions they are being punished by the fire. So, adab of the barzakh. The punishment of the grave is the punishment of the barzakh. And the barzakh is the status between this life and the hereafter. And this status, a person can be punished and, and they will be according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wishes. In the grave, my friends... Sometimes we think that, okay, inshallah, you know, we're not going to have so much fitna. But look at the description of the people, of the angels that will come to us and, and ask us questions in the grave. The hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi mentioned that the people, that the two angels that will come, first of all, the hadith that mentions that their names are Munkar and Nakir, are not authentic. The hadith that mentions the names of Munkar and Nakir are not authentic. So the names are not Munkar and Nakir. Also, Munkar is a, is a filthy name. It means evil. And nakir also is also means something that you stay away from and, and it's, and it's uh, repulsive. So the ulama mentioned that in, rea- in reality, angels are not repulsive and, and they, are not, they don't have uh, evil names. And as a result, in reality, the names are not authentic. However, the two angels that will come, that is definitely true. And the ahadith mentioned that their voices are like thunder. And they're completely black and their eyes are like lightning. And in one hadith, either the eyes are blue or... In, Another hadith, their eyes are red. And, and when they blink their eyes, it's, it's lightning. And the voice is like thunder. And the complexion is completely black, pitch dark. And this is the, these are the two question, angels that will come and question you. How severe is the test going to be in the grave? Well, listen to this. Do you remember the test of the Dajjal? What is the test of the Dajjal?